Welcome to the Pool Solutions DIY help videos. In these videos we will help you to restore your swimming pool to look like uh, the one you can see on, in these pictures. And of course this is what the swimming pool uh, looked like before. Uh, we will use P16 fiber grinding discs uh, mounted on a rubber backing disc to a 230 millimeter grinder. Uh, to prepare the surface and uh, remove all old paint, algae, any loose material, brittleness from the surface and clean the surface in order to allow the primer epoxy layer to sufficiently penetrate into uh, the plaster surface. Uh, we do not recommend using an acid wash or using chemicals to uh, prepare the surface due to the fact that uh, acid will penetrate into the surface and need to be neutralized very very thoroughly afterwards and this will create extra work for you and if uh, not done properly might create staining of the paint layer uh, afterwards due to the reaction between acid or chemicals and uh, the wet paint. We will just slightly grind the pool like this in preparation. You can use measuring marks to measure out the contents of the primer A and primer B or you can just add the contents together if you if you have two applicators uh, to, uh, uh, handling the application uh, which will give you four liters of mixed product uh, which you can split up between the two. Mix this with a proper mixing tip and electric drill for uh, two minutes and uh, make sure you have a proper mix uh, between the epoxy parts. Now we mix primer A uh, with primer B as you can see here it's important to mix the correct components primer B and primer A uh, otherwise you can measure it out in a 3 to 1 mix ratio but uh, please do confirm with the labels on the side of the bucket as the product might change from time to time and the mix ratios can be adjusted. Uh, we will be using mohair rollers and normal paint brushes for the application. Uh, any short pile roller uh, marked for enamel paints uh, are suitable uh, for the application of the epoxy. Now we will be starting with the paint process and as you can see after mixing the primer in the correct uh, 3 to 1 ratio, uh, we've started cutting in along the bottom line of the tiles with a brush. And as you can hear, every, every job has got its perks with a nice sound of the birds in the background. And you need a steady hand for that. Then coating the rest of the surface with a primer. After covering the whole surface with primer, Check every 10 minutes for dry spots that might appear where the primer was absorbed. Wet these spots again uh, with primer so that the whole surface has a wet look as we want to apply a top coat, the first top coat onto this uh, still wet sticky primer layer. On hot summer days the primer will start to feel a little bit sticky under the fingers but will still be damp wet. Uh, and can then be overcoated. In s winter times this can take up to two hours. Uh, there's a little problem there, they've lost the roller, little accidents can happen uh, and the plan must be made now to resolve this and uh, problem resolved we can proceed uh, with this application. If any layer was left to harden overnight it must be sanded by hand and 60 grit sandpaper uh, we will now start with the top coat, the first top coat layer and as you can see we will be using top coat A mixed with top coat part B. First stir the contents of the top coat part A separately before adding uh, the curing agent to the part A. Uh, here we will measure out a certain amount and we will measure out uh, it in a 2 to 1 mix ratio. You will see there is part 1 uh, of the top coat A measured out. The mix ratio differs from the primer. Uh, in this case uh, it is a 2 to 1 mix ratio and there goes the second measurement of top coat A. And we are measuring out uh, in approximately 750 milliliters of it at a time. So there's two parts top coat A and now uh, we will add one part of the curing agent, the top coat part B.
and we then have a 2 to 1 mix ratio. The reason that we don't add uh, together the two buckets is that we will have too much for one layer. So we need to measure out uh, in this quantity so we can complete one layer only uh, with the quantity that we have prepared. And one can expect to cover approximately 12 to 13 square meters uh, per liter of mixed product. Uh, mix the top coat thoroughly for approximately 5 minutes uh, and we will now revert back to the first pool in this video where we will be applying the, the light uh, blue. There we're starting with the first top coat onto a wet uh, primer. We've given it an hour and a half to two hours in the winter to uh, become a little bit sticky and then apply uh, the first top coat on top of the damp wet primer which is important to create a strong bond from the first top coat down into the substrate uh, that is now penetrated by that uh, uh, primer layer. I test the primer under the fingers when it becomes a little bit sticky in some places you can apply the top coat. Uh, it's quite slippery as you can see here so you have to be steady on your feet or make use of a spike shoes to walk on the wet primer but we are getting along well with the gum boots here and with extension poles to help uh, ease the job a bit. That is the next day. Uh, the coating is now hard and set, a little bit glossy, still patchy, uh, but we can clean that now if there's leaves uh, or rainwater or anything in the pool and then start with a with the sanding of the whole surface and that is important using 60 grit sandpaper to break the gloss just scratch it a bit to create a good mechanical bond uh, for the next layer this is the long longer process where, where we let the coating to dry overnight sand it and then uh, proceed with the next uh, top coat layer and uh, you will now see how the, the color will, will start to, to come out uh, very solid uh, you can apply more thickly now on this sanded layer. Uh, again, be careful for teardrops. Uh, and there's the finished result after the second coat. And of course, uh, the same procedure is followed. Uh, leave it to dry overnight, sand it a bit the next day to break the gloss, and apply the final coat. And uh, this is the final result of that. Before we proceed to the rest of these videos, uh, let's uh, quickly just have a look at a few uh, important points. First of all, these videos are not complete, they are not that detailed. It's a short overview of the process, uh, so you can see what uh, lies ahead and uh, get a feeling for, for the project. But uh, always read and follow the written application instructions, which uh, is very complete. And that is always rule one. Read the instructions. Right, let's uh, look at the next point. Mix the epoxy A and B components in small quantities. Beware that the product has a pot life. It's a epoxy. So there's a resin and a curing agent uh, that will react with each other and it will set in the bucket uh, during very hot conditions. That might be as low as 10 minutes. During winter times and uh, lower temperatures, there's a, there's a dramatic increase in, uh, in pot life uh, and it can be a one hour or more. That's why the next point is also important. Keep the components cool. So when you store these components next to the swimming pool or wherever you are working, keep it in the shadow or under roof uh, and uh, keep it as cool as possible. Also, it helps to paint early in the morning. Uh, it's much better. Uh, the swimming pool surface is cooler to work on. It will give you a little bit more time to work. Uh, and also when you mix the components and uh, the part A and part B components are not uh, that warm, it will extend uh, the lifespan of the product in the bucket. While the, when applicated on the swimming pool surface, of course, the drying time on the surface will be much longer in the region of four to six hours to, to dry completely. Uh, in very hot conditions, of course, you, you might even consider uh, using a large bucket with ice and put uh, the buckets uh, with the components in there, keep it cool, uh, so that when you uh, mix the components together, 
it will extend the port life dramatically. Uh, we had cases where uh, the product did sit in the bucket and people added all the epoxies together, not working in small quantities, and uh, they got a nice mold out of, out of that bucket, which is unusable. Of course, you can use it as a door stopper or a small chair for children, and you will be the only person with such a unique, wonderful object, but it won't help your pool project. So, yes, uh, keep in mind the pot life and keeping the components uh, cool. Right, never paint over wet and damp areas in the pool. Uh, when you've emptied the pool and you started grinding and sanding, uh, watch out for uh, moist penetrating from the outside, uh, causing wet spots on the pool. Allow these to dry completely. Uh, if there's a, com a continuous flow of uh, moist out of certain spots on the surface, it's not on all pools that we do experience this, but there is a, a, a percentage of pools which uh, do suffer this uh, condition where there's uh, high uh, levels of water uh, around the pool and it penetrates through cracks and uh, the surface material. Uh, you need to open this up, grind it open or drill a hole right through the swimming pool site at the bottom of these wet spots and uh, just drain that uh, water table a bit on the outside uh, before you uh, paint the pool over those areas. Uh, do not paint on brittle or weak substrates. Uh, in many cases where the marbleite has become brittle or soft, uh, the epoxy will penetrate uh, that substrate and create a hardened layer inside the substrate and uh, it might later crack loose when the marbleite is not strong or hard and you don't want that. So sandy surfaces cannot be painted. Your plaster surface must be hard and solid and able to sustain a painted layer. Of course, uh, the epoxy paint do set into a very hard, glossy, almost a porcelain-like finish. You can't scratch it, you can't uh, remove it by itself, but if it breaks loose from the surface, it will normally be because there is a weak marbleite uh, or plastered surface behind, and two or three millimeter of, of, of that sandy surface uh, will break loose with the epoxy paint layer. And then, of course, mix the correct components, part A and part B of the epoxy. Uh, part A being the resin and part B the curing agent. And, of course, you have two products uh, in the set uh, that we supply. Uh, there is a top coat uh, part A and B and there's a primer part A and B. And, of course, top coat A, a is always mixed with top coat B and primer A with primer B. Don't intermix. Uh, mix in the right quantities and the, mix, uh, the mixing ratio is indicated in our application instructions and on the buckets. Uh, make sure that you separate the top coat from the primer when you start the project. Start with the primer, uh, put the top coat aside so there's no um, accidents uh, mixing wrong components together. Then of course uh, a good point, uh, stir the part A components separately before mixing with the curing agent, the part B. It's a good thing uh, to always stir up the pigments, uh, the solvents, mix it uh, in well in the bucket that we supply or in a separate uh, bucket, but do stir the part A that contains the pigments and the solvents uh, and a lot of quartz that's in there. Just stir it up and, and keep a good uh, mix throughout the project uh, so your product stays the same and the color stays the same throughout uh, the paint project. Always sand any dried and hardened layers before overcoating. Important point, the epoxy will set into a very glossy uh, surface uh, and once it dried overnight and uh, the coatings to follow will not stick well to it. Just break that gloss a bit, scratch the gloss a bit. Uh, it's not important to sand uh, that deep on it, but it must be sanded everywhere. Don't skip spots as that uh, might compromise uh, the interlayer bonding of the product. If you follow the short method where uh, the epoxy coat is applied in while it's still damp and wet, of course you don't have to sand in between. We hope you enjoyed this and uh, we will soon have more videos for you uh, to watch.